Ace, your doctor, fabulous, beautiful man face. Where are you? Oh, there you are. I found you. I found you. Oh, my God. I'm so excited to talk to him. Yay! <laughs> we did it. We did it. Hi, handsome. Can you tell me just for fun, just to like, you know, brag a little about how much amazing activities you do? What did you do today? Did you like swim with the dolphin oh, and gosh. ride your bike? <laughs> <laughs> no, today I had to work because my book came out, but I did go, I did work out with my trainer and I went for a beautiful swim in the ocean and uh, I just took a quick shower and uh, put my makeup on and uh, there I am. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. Literally, your skin is like, like the most tan ever. <laughs> I'm so excited. So, um, well, first of all, we're going to be seeing each other in T minus two weeks where I get to spend tres semanas with you on the island in Maui. Yes, Can't yes. wait for your delicious food. Like part of me has like been dreaming. I'm not even kidding. I'm like oh, in and out of you dreams. Know, you know of, what, like, Mickey? I got a chai pancake recipe from Himalayan buckwheat that I'm making from the book. So it's going to be chai pancakes, which are super high protein, low sugar, full of yummy phytochemicals. And uh, you don't have to have one little bit, bit of get, guilt eating them. Oh my God. Well, I am so excited to talk about that book, which is already what top three on Amazon right now. What is it? Three. I think it's three of all books. Yeah. It is insane. This is number, what book of yours? Uh, I don't know. I think it's 17 or 18. Oh my. <laughs> number 17 or 18. I think it's like 13 New York Times bestselling books. Well, this, this might be 14. This 14. <laughs> I'm dead. You are a beast. Beast mode. No, okay, I, was so talking to, I was talking to Deepak yesterday, and I felt really bad because he has 22 New York Times bestsellers. I'm like, Deepak, I'm never going to catch up. <laughs> Mark, please. You are the man. Okay, but, actually, so, but actually, to be fair, he wrote way more books. So as a percent, right, I think exactly, I'm, I'm better. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and you know what? He, he didn't heal my thyroid the first time to get me pregnant like you did and so oh, okay. you are you are you are you are both healers in your own ways and i'm so proud to know you proud to be your friend how to support you here so for okay so tell us about this book what is tell me what pegan is like paleo vegan like tell me why you wrote this book. well like you know everybody's so confused that's why you call me every week should i eat this should i eat that what should i do and everybody <laughs> is just like totally out of their mind with the different opinions about what we should and we shouldn't eat. We should be paleo, we should be vegan, we should be keto, we should do intermittent fasting, we should be low carb, we should be low fat. We should, I mean, it's, a, it's enough to make everybody crazy. And, and I realized that you know, people needed a sensible guide on how to eat for, for them, right? Because everybody's different. There's no one size fits all. And the vegan diet essentially was a joke because I was sitting on a panel with a couple of doctors who were friends of mine. And one was a paleo doctor. There was a vegan cardiologist. And they were fighting. And I'm like, hey, if you're paleo and you're vegan, I must be pegan. And it was just to lighten the room up because everybody was so like, ooh, you know, it was all the diet wars. It's worse than religion or politics. It's and crazy, it's like, right? It's, it's crazy. Like and you got the game changers and then what the health and people are going crazy with these movies and, and you know, confused and you've got kissed the ground. And it's like everybody's saying something different. So uh, you know, I realized that, you know, when I, when I, when I kind of made that joke that actually there was something to it, that the idea that, that we're so different is really false, that they're identical, paleo and vegan are identical, except for one thing, which is animal protein versus grains and beans, where you get your protein. Otherwise, they both think we should eat whole foods, lots of fruits and vegetables, lots of good fats, uh, you know, lots of nuts and seeds. We should be eating processed grains, food. We, and we, we know that, I mean, for me, like when, when you and I did my levels, we found that my grains and beans cause inflammation in my system and actually, and, and meat protein doesn't. So I was actually not eating a lot of meat for a long time and I was actually hurting parts of my health. Like what are, what are your thoughts when people say, well, you know, plenty of like vegetables do that job. Well, what I, what I say is don't let your ideology trample over your biology, right? Mm, your body yeah. knows, your body knows. And, and you can listen to any other person you want, but the smartest doctor in the room is your own body it will tell you what doesn't work every single time if you pay attention. And that means sometimes experimenting, you know, try being vegan, see how you feel. Sometimes people do fine for a year or two and then they start their health decline. Or maybe people, you know, eat um, more carbohydrates, they do fine. Other people may need really less carbohydrates. Just everybody's different. Some people can eat gluten, some people eat dairy, some people can't. So you really have to personalize it. And the whole premise of 
the Pegan diet is, is really simple. It's food is medicine. It's not just calories. It's information. It's instructions. It's like code, which you're programming your biological software with every single bite. And it regulates every key system in your body. So our body really is this magical ecosystem. How do we influence it? A lot of things, right? With sleep, exercise, relationship, stress, all that stuff. But food is the single most important thing we do every single day to regulate our biology. Absolutely. Period. And it, it does it in real time. And so with functional medicine, we have seven key systems that determine all of your health. Your gut, your immune system, your detox system, your energy system, your transportation systems, you know, circulation, all your communication systems, hormones, neurotransmitters, and your structural system. All these systems are regulated by what you eat. So then you say, well, what should I be eating? Well, you should be eating incredibly high quality information. The quality is the key here. Because if you eat, for example, meat, meat is not meat is not meat. Dairy is not dairy is not dairy. Wheat is not wheat is not wheat, right? If you take, for example, a feedlot cow, which is what a lot of the studies have been done on, it's terrible. It's terrible for them. It's terrible for the environment, climate. It's terrible for you to eat it. When you eat a wild animal or a grass-finished animal yeah. that's eating hundreds of different wild species of plants or meat is full of phytochemicals and increased levels of antioxidants and less in, and, and anti-inflammatory fats, it's a very different thing for your biology. And they've actually done clinical trials looking at this where you take, in Australia, kangaroo meat versus a feedlot meat. The kangaroo meat, all your inflammatory markers go down. On the feedlot meat, they go up. Totally. So, so, the, I, so what, what, about, what about something like goat cheese? Because I know, like, you know, pegan diet is vegan yeah. and paleo, but doesn't really involve Yeah, yeah. Cheese, I know so what about dairy? Right, 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 dairy. Yeah. Dairy, is a, dairy is a good one. So we all were taught that we need, you know, milk because nature's perfect food and if we don't have dairy we're not going to grow big and strong and uh and that's just a big bunch of baloney uh and and you don't take my word for it but there's a wonderful article uh in new england journal of medicine the most prestigious medical journal in the world by two of my friends dr Har uh, harvard's uh, nutritionist walter willett and david ludwig and it's called milk and health you can google it milk and health and they go through and they break down why the the, the myth is there that we think that milk is good for us it doesn't make us have strong bones it doesn't cause weight loss it doesn't you know, benefit on us in, in so many ways. In fact, it can be very harmful in many ways. But that's not to say that all milk is bad. And so what's happened is that, you know, the Maasai, for example, eat only milk and meat, but they use 12 different spices in their milk and 28 spices in their meat, which changes the, the quality uh, and the information of it. The Moroccans, for example, will cook with dozens of spices that actually alter the, the properties of the meat to make it actually less inflammatory or less problematic. But if you, if you look at dairy, the dairy we're eating now is from these Holstein cows that are all high, high, uh, hybrid cows that have been bred for tremendous amounts of milk production. They give them hormones, antibiotics, feed them the unnatural diets of corn and ground up animal parts and Skittles and who knows what. They, they milk them while they're pregnant and you're getting huge amounts of all kinds of weird stuff. They give them growth hormones and it's really an, a, a very different kind of milk because it has A2, K, A1 casein, which is super inflammatory right. and, and causes all these gut issues I'm and other problems. Yeah. Right. So, but if, you, but if you look, for example, at heirloom cows, or I was talking to Deepak yesterday about it. He's like, oh, we're in the, India, we have cows and uh, everybody eats cows. And, uh, and it's like, yeah, yeah, we have the milk. The we can do was, that amongst friends. It, <laughs> but, it was, but it was like, <laughs> it was like this incredible um, in, in revelation to him that those cows have a different form of casein, right? The Brahmin cows. Are, are more heirloom cows. They don't have the A1 casein. Where sheep and goat, for example, have A2 casein, uh -huh. which, is, which is actually fine for most people. Yeah. And, if you're eat, and it also depends what they're eating. Like if you have a goat that's eating all kinds of crap, it's not going to be good. But yeah. if you have a goat that's foraging on certain shrubs, it's going to have the same phytochemical content uh, of catechins as green tea. Well, wouldn't so it be the same thing about beef cattle then too, if they're grazing cows? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's interesting because, like, when we go to Europe and France and whatever, like, we never have any inflammation or gas or feel gross after eating dairy, but it's only in this country where the dairy just, like, totally, you know, from like, mass, you know, mass produced that it just, you feel, you can feel the difference between That's eating right. in Europe and eating here. So quality is the key. Food is medicine is the key. And personalization is the key. And the 21 principles in the book are really, are, are really simple. It's very thin. It's like one of my skinniest books because it's... <laughs> Really, the news to you is super simple, 21 principles that, that are guides. They're just like guardrails. Like, if you're going to eat meat, here's how to do it. If you're going to be a vegan, here's how to do it. If you want to personalize your nutrition, here's how to do it. If you want to understand what's the right dairy to eat, this is how. If you want to understand what grains and beans you should be eating, these are the ones. And so it goes through all the science, the deep, deep science of what we know 
combining it with a very inclusive, non-dogmatic approach to eating, it gets people off of all this crazy stuff. There's even a word for it now. It's called orthorexia, which is where you're like obsessed with what you're eating and you restrict yourself or you do all these crazy diets. And it's, 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 uh, it, it can become really problematic for people. Versus but just I, like whole food, plant-based, you know, 10%. Sorry, ten percent. Ten percent of your plate is um, is it ten percent of your plate? Per no, like seventy five. Seventy five percent of your plate should be non starchy vegetables. So okay. you have two, three, four sides. So I'll make like a stir fried broccoli. Like last night we had we had a jicama and and uh, and watermelon radish salad with uh, high basil, a little ginger, uh, tahini, lemon, cumin dressing, and olive oil. And I'm then we good. had. All right, and then we had roasted lion's mane mushrooms. I had stir fried uh, chard and kale with ginger and mirin. Uh, and uh, what else did we have? I know we had some ma mahi mahi that was pan seared. Uh, and and um, you know, so we had like three or four vegetables. Oh yeah, and then oh yeah, and then we had uh, small little new potatoes with parsley and lemon and garlic. So we had like four or five vegetable dishes and a little piece of fish or a little piece of protein. And that's really what you should be eating. Mickey, you want to come for dinner? Come on. I'm like so hungry. I'm like drooling. I'm so excited. <laughs> it was, uh, it was like, I'm and actually... what was so funny was I wasn't even planning it. It was like, what was ever in the fridge, leftover, this and that. I just made it up and we had a bunch of friends over and it was great. You know, I'm literally right now, as you speak, we're making car carrot fries from your food, your food. Um, what book. the heck should I eat? Yeah. Yeah, from food. What the heck should what, I cook? What the heck should I cook? So I'm actually yeah. right, right now, as we speak, and tomorrow I'm making broccoli. <laughs> I'm making the turmeric, um, yeah. you know, the, the turmeric um, uh, coconut thing. Anyways, it's your, your, your recipes are just like incredible. How do you think about putting recipes together? Because you're such an amazing chef. Like, how do you know what goes well? Like, what is- Well, you know, this is a thing, you know, I think we, we lost the art of cooking. I mean, think about it generationally, you know, we, we learned from our grandparents and our parents and all that stuff. And now we have two or sometimes three generations now of Americans who don't know how to cook. And who don't right. know the basic skills of how to take care of themselves. And I think, you know, when I grew up, you know, my mother and my father spent the 1950s in Europe where they shopped at all the fresh markets and they went to the butcher and they went to the dairy guy and they went to the vegetable guy and the fruit guy and, and the bakery. And, 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 it, and it was all real fresh whole food. And they missed the entire industrial food revolution oh, that, that, you know, that, that took over America in the 50s and 60s. And so they came back and my mom always had a garden in the backyard. We had in, our, in suburbia in the 70s, we had like six fruit trees. We had a garden. I would go pick the tomatoes. And then she would always cook fresh food. And I just learned by being in the kitchen with her. And I taught my kids by bringing them in the kitchen. But cooking is a skill like anything else. It's like, well, you want to fly, uh, you want to you know, drive a car. Well, it's not easy to drive a car. You have to actually learn the basic skills. You have to learn the rules of the road. You have to learn what you're doing. But if you don't actually figure out how to, to drive, you can't drive and it feels scary. But once you learn how to drive, then you can drive anywhere. And same thing with cooking. There's basic skills. You need the basic equipment and you need to learn basic skills. And I'll just say a quick story because, you know, we think it's so hard and so difficult. Yeah. And, but I, I, I went to visit this family in South Carolina as part of this movie Fed Up years ago. And um, this family was on, on disability, uh, $1,000 a month for food for a family of five. They lived in the trailer. They never cooked a meal in their entire life. Everything was a box, package, can, processed food. The father was 42 years old, already had kidney failure on dialysis from diabetes at 42, not uh, childhood diabetes, but adult onset. The mother was well over 100 pounds overweight. The son was 16. It was like 50% body fat and very, very obese, I'm pretty much almost diabetic. And I went into their trailer. I said, let's not, let me, I don't want to give you a lecture. Let's just cook a meal together. So we went to the, got groceries. We made this food from good food on a tight budget. They lived in one of the worst food deserts in America. And, and I said, here's how you peel garlic. Here's how you chop an onion. Here's how you roast a potato. Here's how you stir fry vegetables. Here's how you make a salad. Here's how you make salad dressing from olive oil and vinegar. Here's, you know, just here we made turkey chili, you know, from really simple food. And, and they were like, wow, this is fun and this is easy. And uh, do you do this every night with your family, Dr. Hyman? I'm like, yeah. And then I said, listen, I didn't know what was going to happen. So I gave him the guide on how to eat well for less and a good food on type. I gave them my cookbook. I said, you can do this. The first week she texted me, they lost 18 pounds. The first year they lost 200 pounds as a family. And the son, the father got a new kidney because he had to lose weight to get a kidney. The son actually lost 50, but then gained it all back because he went to work at Bojangles 
and oh. which is like fast food. But then he got his act together and, and we, we stayed in touch and I helped him and he lost 138 pounds. Now he's in medical school. I wrote him a letter of recommendation for medical school. Uh, his family never even finished high school, most of his family. So it was really, it was really it showed me that, you know, it's not a lack of desire or a lack of willingness. It's a lack of education. It's a lack yeah. of skills. And so, uh, you know, I think we could literally transform America if we created millions of community health workers that went around America and went into people's kitchens and taught them the basic skills of cooking. And so, how, people, I mean, so people don't have any baked skills whatsoever and they open up the vegan diet and look at the recipes. Would it be just easy follow the rent? Like you don't have to know, you know like how to no. saute something. You no. don't have to know any no. skills, right? No, no. And it's actually, as my mother used to say this, if you can read, you can cook. Right. And maybe you don't even need to read now. You can listen to audio book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But basically, if you follow the recipe, that's how I learned to cook. You follow recipes and you go, well, you first heat up the oil. Then you put in the garlic. Then you put in the onions. It's like you don't, you have to know what goes first and second and third. But once you do a bunch of recipes, you see how it works. And then you I don't think just... it's like you can't, you can't overcook the garlic. I've just been learning how to cook recently, to be perfectly honest. And I'm like, you can't put the, you can't put the oil hot with the garlic because you want to burn the garlic. And then right. So it's like, I was like, oh, 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 wow, low. And then so there's still like some skill. Yeah, there's some skills, to, but it's not rocket science. It's not rocket know, science. Like, you just read. So I know. I know. Yeah. You just read. Yeah. I literally, like, I, I literally went, we went to the, we went to Whole Foods today and got all these things from your book so that we can just make this whole week. I'm just going to be making all of your recipes and I'm so excited. So yeah, uh, this is so exciting. So what do you hope to come from? The vegan diet. Well, what I hope for is, is sort of an end to this divisiveness that we have in our society around food and nutrition, that we all should go, wait a minute. While on the margins, there may be some variations and maybe some disagreements. Down the center, we understand what, what is real good food. It's whole food. It's real foods. It's lots of plant foods. It's if you're going to eat, but, uh, you know, if you're going to eat animal foods, here's the kinds you should eat that are uh, regeneratively raised or sustainably harvested or that are good for the animals and good for you and the planet. What how do you, think, how do you do that? Yeah. What do you think about like, you're, you know, signing up for your local CSA and getting butcher box delivered? Like, yeah. There are a few things so in the book, yeah, absolutely. In the book I go through, how do you do it? Like how do you, for example, uh, eat as a regenitarian? That's one of the topics in the book. How do you eat like a regenitarian? Mm -hmm. So yes, you can shop at Thrive Market that has regeneratively raised beef and, and sustainably harvested fish and organic foods and regenerative products. You can, Join your community as part of agriculture. You can shop at the farmer's market. You can order direct from ranchers and farmers. You can order direct from, like, for example, Mariposa Ranch I talked about in the book. You can get a, a grass-finished meat for less per pound than a McDonald's hamburger. Right? What? You Where? Can have, How? You, you can, you can buy. Yes, you can buy. For example, if you, if you go to McDonald's, you buy a hamburger. Per serving, it's more expensive than grass for me if you buy in bulk. So you could buy, for example, with, you've got all these friends, Mickey on Booms probably, you could all buy a cow together or three cows or 10 lambs and you chop it up and put it in your freezer and you can get it for less than $8 a pound. And, and so that really changes the game. So for $2 a serving, you know, you get to have a grass incredible, grass finish, right. happy cow. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be too expensive. It may take a little work and resourcing and stuff, but you know, it's yeah. uh, no different than clipping coupons in a, in a, in a newspaper. Yeah. Well, so I'm in Austin, Texas here, and I just signed up for the local. We, we just moved here. So we signed up for the local CSA. Really easy. Actually delivered to your house on Wednesdays. A box mm -hmm. of just local, fresh, seasonal produce. What's your, what's your, in your book, do you talk about cooking seasonally as well? Yeah, listen, you know, what's fascinating is, is uh, you know, at first I think, think just getting people off processed food and eating real food is like, the first hurdle. First, totally. But then it gets really interesting about where food is grown, when it's grown, when it's harvested, how it's grown. I mean, in Tibetan medicine, the doctors spent 11 years studying Tibetan medicine, and part of their training is to go up in the Himalayas and find the herbs and the plants that they make, they make their medicines from. But they know that they have to go in this season for this, this particular benefit or let this part of the season in this particular area to get this particular benefit. And I think, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot to be said for eating foods that are local and seasonal that are most nutrient -tense. I'm here in Hawaii. And, you know, like you eat a papaya, it's like, wow, it's a totally different experience than eating a papaya in New York City that it was shipped in a box and it's hard when it's green was picked and sitting in a storage container for two months and it's like totally different. So you want these. And what's really fascinating is that flavor, flavor correlates with nutritional density, right? right. So most people don't realize that, that actually the flavor of real food, I'm not talking about all the shitty uh, processed ingredients that they put fake flavors in. I'm talking about real flavor that's in food, the more flavorful it is, 
those flavors are phytochemicals. Those flavors that delight your palate are all the medicines in food. So if you can eat something that's like a ripe tomato off a vine, that's a cherry tomato in late August in, in New England, it's very different than eating a cardboard tomato that's shipped from Mexico in the middle of winter. It's like, you know, very, very different. I 100%. There's a little construction happening back there. So that's right. my phone. Um, that's right. Wow. Well, this is so, 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 so compared to food, what the heck should I eat versus a vegan diet? What do you say, like, you know, right now, if someone's trying to just cook, like, what, what do you, what, what are your thoughts around, like, what diet makes the most sense? Or I guess something for everyone. I guess you're right. You said, you said already, it's your own body's. Like wherever you're well, I mean, the vegan diet is just like a set of, of gu guidelines and principles. And within that, you can be flexible for cultural preferences, taste preferences, philosophical preferences, your individual biological needs. And really, it's, it's really a kind of uh, a set of guidelines that it really applies to everybody. So I think everybody understands that food is medicine. Everybody understands that we should be eating whole foods. Everybody understands that we should try to personalize our approach to fit our bodies. Everybody understands we should eat a way to support the environment and the ecosystem and reverse climate change. I mean, it's not... It's not rocket science. And so how do you do that? That's why I wrote the vegan diet. It's just and like, really one of, simple. One of, the things, one of the things I remember you saying is like always shop around the, like on the outskirts of a, of a store, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you go down the aisles, yeah, you can find some things and maybe you'll find olive oil or certain condiments and stuff. But basically you want to shop and eat things without labels. I mean, I, you know, it, it's not that hard. I always joke because I, I speak off in the churches and I say, listen, it's not hard to figure out what to eat. Ask yourself and you pick something up. A simple question. Did God make this or nature, if you don't believe in God? Did God make this or did man make this? Did God make an avocado? Yeah. Did he make a Twinkie? No. Right. Right. Did, God make, did God make Skittles? No. <laughs> did God make, you know, an avocado, uh, like a papaya? Yeah. It's not that hard. And then, la and then like, what, what about like something like, do you talk about like desserts and like being like indulgences? Like, oh yeah. Oh God. It's so good. I got, I got snickerdoodles in here and and brownies and, but God and all kinds of make, stuff. But God didn't make snickerdoodles. Okay, no, but the ingredients, <laughs> the ingredients. Okay, it's the ingredients, right? It's almond flour, coconut, vanilla, almond milk, sea salt, cinnamon, coconut butter, monk fruit, a cinnamon. These are, right? These are actual real foods, black bean brownies. Can we make that? Can we make that when I see you? Yeah, la honey lavender ice cream. With, oh, uh, my oh, this God. is going to be so good. With vanilla beans and uh, full-fat coconut milk and a little bit of honey and gelatin. Lavender flowers and black sesame seeds, black bean brownies with nut butters and flax seeds and pasture-raised eggs and and and, uh, and cacao. It's just real food. I'm, I'm not supposed to eat it. And wait till you taste my chai pancakes. I oh my god, I'm so excited. Wait, Did I send you the picture of the chai pancakes? No, send me send me right now. I'll post it. I'll get everyone really. Oh, go on my Instagram. I'll send it to you. Okay. I'll send it to you. But it's like okay. it, yeah, me. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, Mark, I'm so genuinely proud of you. Everybody should get the book, The Pegan Diet. I know that Mark has changed my life, saved my life, helped me have a baby. You've been such an instrumental life, part of my life, both as my doctor, but beyond as like a best friend, dear friend. And mm. I can't wait to spend time with you. I love you so much. And everyone get The Pegan Diet. It's such a great book. And I can't wait to cook from it every single day. So... Thank you. Thank I you. Love you. I love you. I love you. Love Good you too. Bye. Bye.